Hi, uh, this is Dominic Giles, and um, I just wanted to talk through some of the changes we've made to Swingbench uh, 2.6. So there's some new benchmarks and some new functionality in the utilities, and let's go through those uh, quickly now. So the first thing to note is that I've tidied up some of the configuration. There's less XML files inside of the bin and winbin directories, and that should make it cleaner. Um, a lot of the wizard configuration has been moved into its own dedicated directory. But you can see here inside of the bin or the winbin directory, there's a few more utilities, and we'll take a look at some of those as we actually go through um, this short uh, video. Um, first, let's run through and build a benchmark using one of the wizards. In this instance, let's install order entry. And as usual, you run one of the wizards, install the schema, and then run Swingbench against that the data that's been installed inside of that schema. So OE wizard is um, pretty much identical to what we had inside of 2.5. The biggest change you'll note is that I've included the ability to specify certificates and credentials files uh, if you're connecting to the Oracle Cloud, in particular Oracle X Data Express. So you can now install these utilities against X Data Express and try those out. Other than that, um, until the very end, uh, running the uh, wizards is pretty similar to it was in 2.5. There's a few more checks, checking for PDB, temp space, undo, and that side uh, of things. It's all, all, all pretty straightforward. We're going to install a very small schema um, because we haven't got very much time. So in this instance, it's only about 100 megabytes in size. Um, and then we just hit finish. The one change that I have made uh, for the wizards is that they now detail clearer where they are in terms of data generation. So here we see the rows being inserted per second, um, how many threads are on the point in time and how far through the data generation it is. So um, after it's gone through and built the index constraints and analyzed the data, you'll get the standard dialog that you used to get in the past. And uh, we'll just hit okay here and go through to the next stage. And the next stage is to fire up one of the load generators. We could use Minibench, Charbench. In this particular instance, we're going to use uh, Swingbench. Um, and the difference from previous releases here is that previously you had to specify a config file. In in um, 2.6, we now prevent you, present you with a dialog which enables you to choose which benchmark you want to run. In this instance, we're going to use the standard order entry server side um, benchmark. Um, there is a new check method, so previously it would just been against the users and the connections to the database. You can now check that you can connect with administrative privileges as well. And if you've done that, we'll be able to collect um, statistics about the um, database as well. Uh, other than that, all of the other tabs um, are largely identical um, to what they were in 2.5. So we start the um, benchmark running. One thing I have changed is I've updated the engine to use JavaFX's uh, charting engine. Added a number of new charts. So here we're taking a look at, and we can see that there is a new chart to um, track uh, wait time for particular sessions. So um, we can see that it's mainly CPU and logging activity. And there's a new chart um, that enables you to see what DML operations are running at any point in time. So uh, as with previous releases, if I double the workload, I can see what impact now that actually has. So you can see there's a change in the response time for the transactions, but also that the wait event um, changes as well. So there's more CPU being consumed and more um, waiting on logging as well. But um, fairly straightforward. Now, if we hit stop um, and uh, go through to the output tab, um, one change you can see here is that I've now included um, percentiles for the transaction. So it's not just minimum and maximum uh, response times, but also the percentiles throughout the um, entire benchmark run. So you have a better overview of what's actually happened. And because we did specify that we wanted to collect um, database statistics, we can see them here, as well as the uh, weight event information um, recorded too. Now, one thing to note here clearly is that uh, XML isn't very user friendly when it comes to reading it. What you can do is save the uh, results out to the file system. So in this instance, let's just save it as SOE run one. We'll save that to the file system um, and exit out of uh, Swingbench. Now, um, there is a utility um, that I've added uh, to 2.6 um, that enables you to go through 
and um, parse the XML file, files that you save and convert them into PDF um, with charts and everything else. So all that we need to do is to run results to PDF and give it the name of the results file that we generated previously. In this instance, SOE run 1.xml. So that generates a PDF file for us. If we look on the file system, it should be there. And what we can do now is to uh, quickly view that um, the file that we generated, the file that's been created for us. And as you can see, it's easier to read. It has all the same information that was inside of the XML file. Um, any recorded transactions are presented in charts for us. Um, all of the transaction information is included. Um, and because we recorded database statistics, we'll also get that information presented in charts um, as well. So all uh, uh, pretty simple stuff. Um, there is another utility I included called SBUtil, and this is particularly useful if you want to validate a benchmark has been installed correctly or to um, scale it up. It has got a number of command lines, so SBUtil minus H shows us what they are. So um, let's first of all just show the rows that we created um, by the wizard. So this utility currently works for SOE and SH. I'll get it running for um, the JSON and TPCDS benchmark as well shortly. Um, so you connect to the schema that we actually created and if you specify command line minus tables it will simply show the row counts and the size of the tables inside of the schema and so this all looks um, pretty reasonable. You can also use it to um, scale up the size of the benchmark so if we just say dupe one it won't change the size but we're interested in compressing it minus AC stands for advanced compression and minus sort will go through and sort the data before it compresses that data. So we'll end up with a benchmark that's the same number of rows, but has the data sorted and compressed. And it won't take very long because we've got not got very much data inside of the database. Um, but what we can see here after it finishes is that the uh, customers table, for instance, has um, is nearly is three times smaller than it was in the um, previous uh, instance. So nice and easy way of scaling up or changing the attributes of your data. Right, um, so I, I did mention we have some uh, new benchmarks as well. One of them is for JSON. Um, now previously we used a graphical version of the wizard to install the data. Let's do this from the command line. It's pretty much identical as you had before, as you can specify all of the command line parameters. Um, the only difference you need to do if you want to run it in character mode is specify the minus CL and that will run it from the command line rather than running it in a graphical user in, uh, interface. Um, as before, we can specify the scale from the command line. So um, in this instance, 0 0.1 um, and minus V indicates that we want verbose output. So we can see what's actually going on as it's inserting the data. And again, this is very quick um, for our data sets. Data's been installed into the database. Um, and we can now go through and run Swingbench as we did before. It presents us with a dialog we can go through and choose the JSON workload. Um, and uh, now we've got four transactions, which models CRUD type uh, operations against our data set. So again, hitting play at this stage, we'll run those transactions and we can go through and see what's actually happening in the database um, for us at the time. So we're running roughly around, you know, two and a half thousand to 4,000 uh, JSON transactions a second against our data set. And clearly, you know that. Um, we can monitor the DML operations as well. So that's the JSON benchmark. Nice easy way to see how JSON performs in the Oracle database. Okay, um, now one of the more interesting aspects uh, and one of the more, more uh, interesting features to, uh, I've added to 2.6, Swingbench 2.6, is the ability for you to declaratively declare a benchmark. And we've done this for the TPCDS like wizard. So TPCDS has around about a hundred queries um, uh, that make up um, its select workload and some transactions that you can run at the same time. Um, and we've used a new feature inside of Swingbench uh, 2.6 to um, declare those. If you look in the configs directory, you'll see an XML file. And this is um, the results of us um, putting together some select statements um, using a new utility called SQL Builder. And SQL Builder enables you to copy and paste select statements or in, in DML operations inside of it and then specify 
um, parameters for those um, DML operations. So here we've got the 100 plus select statements that make up TPCDS and um, the uh, code highlighted in um, a pink is the parameters and I think effectively a colon is highlighted and we can use um, enumerations or ranges of values uh, or random values to change those parameters um, during its execution. So when Swingbench runs this config file, it will replace all of those parameters um, with um, randomly generated uh, data. Now you can run it that way, there is an alternative. Um, you can basically ask uh, SQL Builder to export static literal SQL statements, so you always end up with the statements executed in exactly the same fashion. Um, to run it, we simply uh, fire up Swingbench. Um, in this instance, we choose, uh, we've got two choices for TPCTS benchmark, the select workload or the transaction workload. Uh, let's take a look at the select workload to start with. Um, we connect to um, our uh, database. We select the uh, TPCDLS-like workload. Um, and um, as before, we'll be left with um, a connection dialog which connects to the database. And the difference here is that there is a single transaction. There's not a hundred transactions, but a single operation that you can execute, and that's the statement runner. And that will connect, um, a, it will look for a config file that's specified inside of the environment variables. So if we go down to the environment variables here, take a look at that, we'll see there is a parameter there called TPCDS statements, which is the one that we looked at previously. So when we fire off, that process will go through and parse that XML file, pull out the SQL statements, populate the various parameters with random values based on the enumeration or range or random values that have been generated inside of um, the queries. And so we can run through and this query will run all 100 queries in our environment for us. And that's um, pretty much uh, um, it to Swingbench uh, 2.6. Um, I will run, create some other videos um, showing SQL Builder works in a little bit more detail and highlighting some of the other new features in Swingbench 2.6. But for now, thanks very much, Dominic.